December 14th, 2014 from Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Carolina Panthers in this NFC South Division rivalry matchup with playoff implications. Tampa Bay won the toss. They elected to defer, and so the Panthers would take over first in this game. They started off with the ball on their own 16. Brown then ran for 17 yards and a first down on an end around Philly Brown and that brought the ball to the 33 yard line then on first down from the 33 Derek Anderson at Greg Olson for a 13 yard pass and a first down that brought the ball to the Carolina 46 Jonathan Stewart then ran for 15 yards and a first down that brought the ball across midfield into the Tampa Bay 39 for the first down Stewart then ran for another 10 yards then made it a first down on the 29 Anderson then fumbled on the next play, but he would recover, and it would now be second and 17 from the Tampa Bay 36 for the Panthers. Anderson then hit the rookie Kelvin Benjamin for a 17-yard reception and a first down in the red zone on the Tampa Bay 19. And then on third and five from the 14, a false start would force them to face a third and 10 from the 19. But then Greg Olson caught a 12-yard pass from Anderson to make it a first and goal on the seven. And then another false start penalty would move them back to the 12, and they would end up having to settle for a field goal attempt from the 11 as Graham Gano came out to attempt a 29-yard field goal. It was up. It was good. And the Panthers put the first points on the scoreboard with the score Carolina 3, Tampa Bay 0. So now the Buccaneers would get the ball on their own 20 to start their first possession of this game with just over 8 minutes left in the first quarter. And on 2nd and 9 from the 21, Doug Martin picked up 63 yards as he ran it all the way across midfield to the red zone to make it a first down on the Carolina 16. But then... On the next play, Sims lost two yards. McCown then hit Vincent Jacks for a 10-yard pass, and now it was third and two from the eight. McCown dropped back, and he hit Mike Evans for an eight-yard touchdown, and that gave the Buccaneers the lead with the score 7-3. to three. Tampa Bay over Carolina. And now the Panthers would get the ball with just under six minutes still left in the first, and the ball on their own 18. Derek Anderson hit Jericho Cotchery for an 18-yard reception and a first down at the Carolina 36. Then on second and seven from the 39, Derek Anderson scrambled for an eight-yard run as he brought the ball to the 47. And on second and 10 from the 47, Derek Anderson went to the tight end, Greg Olson, for a 13-yard reception that brought the ball across mid field into the Tampa Bay 40 for the first down. Whitaker then ran for 11 yards and a first down to the Tampa Bay 29, but then a penalty, a holding penalty against the offense would move the Panthers back to the Tampa Bay 39 for a first and 20, and they would fail to get a first down, although they did recover some yards. It's now Graham Gano would come out to attempt a 49-yard field goal. It was up, it was good, and the Panthers cut the Bucks' lead to one with the score Tampa Bay 7, Carolina 6. So now the Buccaneers would get the ball on their own 20 with just over a minute left in the first. And on second and 11 from the 19, muscle hamster Doug Martin ran for five yards to bring the ball to the 24 as the first quarter came to a close. So after one quarter of play, the score was Tampa Bay 7, Carolina 6. So now to open up the second quarter, the Buccaneers would face third and six from the 24, and an incomplete pass would bring out the punting unit as the Buccaneers went three and out on the possession and would punt from their own 24. So now Carolina would take over on their own 37 with a little over 10 seconds ticked off the clock in the second quarter. Anderson then went to Stewart for a six-yard pass. And on second and four from the 43, Anderson went to the rookie Calvin Benjamin for an eight-yard reception and a first down in Tampa Bay territory at the 49. And on first down from the 49, Anderson went to Olsen. He picked up 16 yards in the first down at the Tampa Bay 33. But that's where their drive would stall as Graham Gano would end up coming out to attempt a 50-yard field goal. It was up and it was no good. So the Panthers had a chance to take the lead, but instead they still trailed by one with the score still Tampa Bay 7, Carolina 6. So after the missed field goal, the Buccaneers would take over on their own 41 with about 11 minutes 
minutes left before halftime. Muscle hamster Doug Martin ran for 13 yards in the first down as he brought the ball across midfield and into Carolina territory for a first down on the 46. Then on third and one from the 37, Doug Martin ran for two yards. And now it was a first down on the 35, but they would fail to pick up another first down. Is on third and five from the 30. McCown was sacked by Ely for a nine-yard loss. Ely forced the fumble. The Bucks did recover, and now would come the punting unit to punt from the Carolina 37 instead of attempting a 54-yard field goal. So they elected to punt. And they pinned the Panthers back up against their own end zone on the 12-yard line. So they took over now with just over seven minutes left in the second quarter. And on second and eight from the 14, Derek Anderson hit Greg Olson for an eight-yard reception and a first down on the 22. Anderson then went to Kelvin Benjamin for a 19-yard reception and a first down on the Carolina 41. Then on third and three from the 48, Derek Anderson hit Kelvin Benjamin for a nine-yard reception and a first down in Tampa Bay territory at the 43. And on second and three from the 36, John Stewart ran for six yards in the first down to the 30. Then on third and six from the 26, Derek Anderson found the tight end Greg Olson for a six-yard reception at the 20. This was a first down on the red zone at the beginning of the red zone, but they wouldn't get any further. And out would come Graham Gano to attempt a 38-yard field goal this time. It was up and it was good. And now the Panthers did take the lead with the score, Carolina 9, Tampa Bay 7. So now the Buccaneers, we get the ball with just over a minute left before halftime. They headed on their own 20. And on second and five from the 25, Josh McCown hit Sims for a 15-yard reception and a first down at the 40. McCown then went back to Sims. He picked up 11 yards. And now it was a first down on the Carolina 49. Then on third and 10 from the 49, McCown went back to Sims, this time for a 19-yard reception. The Bucks used their second timeout, and they had a first down now on the 30, but with just six seconds left in the first half, out would come Patrick Murray to attempt the 48-yard field goal to give the Bucks back the lead. It was up, and it was good, and the Buccaneers went up by one point with the score, Tampa Bay 10, Carolina 9. So then after the kickoff, the first half came to a close. So at halftime, the score, Tampa Bay 10, Carolina 9. The Bucks would start off the third quarter with the ball first. They had it on their own 20. A false start moved them backwards. And then on third and 15 from the 15, Josh McCown was sacked for a 12-yard loss by Johnson and Addison. Johnson forced the fumble and short recovered for the Panthers. So now the Panthers would start their first possession of the second half with a first and goal on the four. Tolbert picked up two yards and on second and goal from the two, Derek Anderson out of the shotgun went to Jericho Cotchery for the two-yard touchdown pass that gave the Panthers back the lead with a score Carolina 16, Tampa Bay 10. So now the Buccaneers would take over on their own 23 with a little less than 14 minutes left still in the third. They would end up going three and out and punting the ball from their own 20 as they actually went backwards. So now the Panthers would take over on their own 36 with 12 minutes still left in the third quarter. And on first down, Derek Anderson hit Calvin Benjamin for a 21-yard reception on first down as he brought the ball across midfield into the Tampa Bay 43. Then on first down from the 43, Derek Anderson hit Jericho Cotchery as he brought the walls down with a 16-yard reception on the 27-yard line. So now first down on the 27, they were then faced with a second and five from the 22. Stewart had picked up five yards on first down, and now he picked up 10 yards on second down to bring the ball to the Tampa Bay 12 for the first down. Anderson hit Olsen for a nine-yard reception. It was now second and one on the three. Just three yards from the end zone. They hand it off to the Green Lantern, John Stewart, and he lost two yards. He was tackled by Alteron Werner, and he was a pro bowler last year, and here he forced the fumble. It was recovered by Spence. And so the Buccaneers would take over on their own eight-yard line as they were able to hold the Panthers out of the end zone. So now... First and 10 on the 8, an incomplete pass, and then a false start and another incomplete pass, and it was 4th and 13 from the 4. Muscle Hamster picked up 4 yards to get him out of the end zone, a little bit out, but still they would punt from the shadow of their end zone right there, and it was 
from their eight yard line that they punted and there was actually a fumble on the catch but then the Panthers did end up getting the ball so it was not a turnover on the punt but it was a three and out for the Bucks. and now the Panthers had the ball on the Tampa Bay 44 with eight minutes on the clock and so now they would end up going three and out and punting it back to the Buccaneers from their thir- from the Tampa Bay 38. And so now Tampa Bay was backed up against their end zone once again with the ball on their eight-yard line to start the possession. And they would end up punting from the 16 as they failed to get a first down. And so after punting the ball from going three and out, the Panthers would now have it on the 48 with less than five minutes on the clock in the third. They would end up getting a first down on second and 11 from the 49 with a 14-yard reception by Greg Olson from Anderson that brought the ball to the Tampa Bay 35. But their drive would end up stalling when on third and 10, Derek Anderson was sacked by Levante David for a four-yard loss. There was a holding penalty against the offense that was declined. So out would come the punting unit to punt the ball from the Tampa Bay 39. And now the Bucks were backed up against their own, zone, own end zone once again, starting their possession on their own seven-yard line with just over three minutes left in the third. And on first down was an incomplete pass. Then on second down, they fumbled the ball after an 18-yard run, but the ball went out of bounds. So now it would be first down on the Tampa Bay 25. And on first down, Josh McCown hit Vincent Jackson for a 16-yard reception that made a first down on the Tampa Bay 41. Then on second and eight from the 43, Sims ran for 10 yards and a first down that brought the ball across midfield and into Carolina territory at the 47. Then on second and eight from the 45, muscle hamster Doug Martin got stopped for no gain, and the third quarter came to a close. So after three quarters of play, the score was Carolina 16, Tampa Bay 10. So now to start the fourth quarter, it was third and eight for the Buccaneers on the Carolina 45. Josh McCown drops back to pass, and he was sacked for a seven-yard loss. He fumbled the ball. Harper blew him up, and Ben Wickery recovered. It was initially ruled an incomplete pass, but Carolina ended up challenging, and the play was reversed. So it was ruled a sack, and it was ruled a fumble. And the Panthers took over now on their own 27 with just five seconds ticked off the clock here in the fourth quarter. They were then faced with a first and 15 from the 22 after a false start. Anderson threw an interception, but it ended up being a roughing the passer penalty against the defense. And so now Carolina would have a first down on the 37 instead of the turnover. Then on third and nine from the 38, Derek Anderson hit Brown for a 10-yard reception and a first down that brought the ball to the 48 of the Panthers. Then on second and two from the Tampa Bay 44, Whitaker ran for two yards and a first down to bring the ball to the 42. They ended up being faced with a third and one from the 33, and Anderson ended up picking up three yards in the first down that brought the ball to the 30. But their drive would end up stalling on the 27 as out would come Graham Gano to attempt a 45-yard field goal. It was up. It was good. And the Panthers extended their lead to nine points with the score Carolina 19, Tampa Bay 10. So now the Buccaneers took over, trailing by nine with eight and a half minutes left to play in this game as they needed two scores, a touchdown, and a field goal. They were faced with a third and three from the 27, and McCown hit Vincent Jackson for an eight-yard reception that made it a first down on the 35. And on first down from the 35, McCown went to Jackson again, this time for an 11-yard reception that made it a first down on the Tampa Bay 46. They were then faced with a second and 12 from the 44, and McCown hit Jackson this time for an 18-yard reception as it was now first down in Carolina territory at the 38. And on second and 10 from the 38, McCown went to Shepard, he picked up 23 yards as he brought the ball into the red zone with a first down on the Carolina 15. But then on third and 11 from the 16, McCown ended up running the ball in himself with a 16-yard touchdown run that made this a two-point game. And so now the score was Carolina 19, Tampa Bay 17. So now the Buccaneers would have the ball on their own 22 with three minutes left in this game with just a two-point lead. They need to get a first down as they needed to run the clock out. 
On a first down, Derek Anderson hit Kelvin Benjamin for a 12-yard reception. That forced the Buccaneers to use their first timeout. Then on first down from the 34, Stewart ran for three yards. He fumbled the ball, but the Panthers recovered. So Levante David forced the fumble. Stewart ended up recovering his own fumble, and the Buccaneers used their second timeout. Now on second and seven from the 37, Derek Anderson went back to the rookie Kelvin Benjamin, this time for a 10-yard reception, a first down at the 47 of the Panthers, and the Bucs used their final timeout. So now on first and 10 from the 47, Jonathan Stewart ran for two yards, and that brought the game to the two-minute warning. And now coming out of the two-minute warning, they would just give the ball to Stewart a couple more times. He wouldn't get the first down. And on fourth and four from the 47, with just 30 seconds left on the clock, they would bring out the punting unit. And they would punt the ball to the Buccaneers, who would now get the ball on their own 10-yard line. And they were 90 yards away from the end zone, but they only needed a field goal as they were down by two points. But they had no timeouts. And on first down, they threw an incomplete pass. And on second down from the 10, McCown out of the shotgun, drops back, and he was intercepted by Luke Keekley. And so Keekley with the interception. Edwards got a hand on it. And so now the Panthers had the ball, and all that was left to do was for Derek Anderson to take a knee as this game came to a close with the final score. Carolina 19, Tampa Bay 17. So the Panthers remain in the hunt in the NFC South as they are now actually technically in first place at the moment by a half a game over the Falcons with the Saints yet to play on Monday Night Football against the Bears. So we shall see what happens in that game. If the Saints win, they'll be up by half a game. And if the Panthers, well, the Panthers are right there. But if the Saints lose, they'll be trailing the Panthers by a half a game. So the Panthers will be watching that one pretty closely. But in, in this game with the victory, the Panthers are now 5-8-1 and one on the season. You wouldn't think with a record like that they'd be in the playoff hunt for first place in their division. But they are. They're three and four at home. The Buccaneers are two and twelve on the season. They're two and six on the road. If they weren't already, they were mathematically eliminated. They were still could have been in it in the South. If they would have got the win here, who knows? If they would have won out, the Bucks would have had a chance. Even actually, I think because they would have been tied. It would have been like a four-way tie. But anyway, in this game, Derek Anderson got the start. As I'm sure you're all familiar, Cam Newton had that motor vehicle accident and we definitely hope that he gets better definitely for his own health regardless of football but in this game Derek Anderson was 25 for 40 he had 277 passing yards and a touchdown he also had 14 yards on the ground with five carries Josh McCown was 13 for 28 with one touchdown and one interception he had 21 yards off of two carries the leading rusher in the game was Doug Martin, muscle hamster, had 14 carries for 96 yards for an impressive 6.9 average. Should have just kept giving it to muscle hamster. The leading rusher for the Panthers was a Green Lantern himself, John Stewart. Not the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern, the other Green Lantern. If you read the comic books, you know what I'm talking about. But he had 22 carries for 73 yards in this game. He also had 6 yards receiving off of one reception. Doug Martin actually had three yards receiving off of one reception as well. And the leading receiver in this game was the tight end Greg Olson of the Carolina Panthers. He had 10 receptions for 110 yards. The rookie Kelvin Benjamin had eight receptions for 104 yards. He's a candidate for rookie of the year. Jericho Cotri had five receptions for 47 yards and a touchdown. And the leading receiver for the Buccaneers was Vincent Jackson. He had six receptions for 70 yards. Sims had three receptions for 45 yards. And on defense, the leading tackler in this game was for the Buccaneers, actually. And that was Bradley McDougald. And he actually had 15 tackles in this game. Levante David had 12 tackles. He also had a sack. The Buccaneers combined for three sacks. His, the other sack, Danny Lansana, had one and a half sacks. And then Jacquees Smith had a half sack. So Lansana had eight tackles along with that one and a half sack. Goldston also had eight tackles. And for the Panthers... The leading tackler it was a two-way tie between Luke Keekley and Trey Boston. 
They both had six tackles. The Panthers combined for three sacks as well. And Ely had the one sack, as well as Harper, and a half sack for both Johnson and Addison. And the game's lone interception is Luke Keekley. as he sealed the deal with that late interception as that brought a close to the game other than the knee and the victory formation. And the Panthers, like I said, with the win, they're still in it in the NFC South as it's anyone's division. Two games left to play. They're a half a game over the Falcons. And depending on what happens tonight with the Saints, as I said earlier, they might end up in first place going into week 16. At the very least, they'll be a half game back of the Saints' worst-case scenario in their from their perspective.